Good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webcast, Hagerman Connection for Autodesk Vault. Our presenter today is Matt Lane. He's the Director of Consulting Services with Hagerman & Company. Before we get started, I want to let you know that you're in listening-only mode. If you have questions during the presentation, just type them into the question panel on the right-hand side of your screen, and they'll be addressed at the end of the webcast. As you exit today, you will be prompted to fill out a survey, and we ask that you take a few moments to fill that out. And with that, I'll hand things over to Matt. All right. Thank you, Ashley. I appreciate everyone joining us here either this morning or this afternoon, depending upon your time zone. As Ashley mentioned, everyone in the webinar will, is in listen-only mode. Uh, we will be taking questions at the end. Uh, those can be submitted through the question panel in your uh, little GoToWebinar interface. Feel free to enter questions any time along as we go through the presentation as you think of them. Uh, it will be the end before we answer them, though, and then we'll give the opportunity to uh, for people to enter more questions at the end. So in this webinar, we're going to be discussing our Hagerman Connection line of products for Autodesk Vault, which actually uh, consists of four products uh, that we'll be talking about. Before we get into that, uh, for anyone on the webinar who's not familiar with us, our company, Hegerman & Company, we've been around 30 to 31 years now, starting out in the CAD business with Autodesk products and expanding from there. Uh, started in Illinois, and you can see we've expanded geographically until we pretty much cover the entire United States in, in terms of areas that we service. Vault, of course, is a data management tool. Vault's been out probably 10 years now. However, at Hagerman & Company, we were doing data management systems long before Autodesk Vault ever came along. We've been doing data management systems for 20 years now. We've done over 400 customer implementations, so we've got a huge wealth of support. And I'd say 90-some percent of the implementations that we've done were done by people who are still with Hagerman & Company. So, you know, not just the company has experience, but our employees have the experience as well. Uh, the Hagerman Connection products are, of course, software products that we've developed, and we've got about 15 years of experience in software development, and a, a couple of the products we're talking about are new. A couple of them have been around and out on the market for a number of years, and were actually on the market before Autodesk Vault ever came along and we've uh, tweaked them to work with, with Autodesk Vault now. Uh, but the products in our uh, connection line of products for Autodesk Vault, uh, we'll be discussing and showing QVP Connection, which is a search view print tool for Vault, Autoplot Connection, which is a tool for batch printing, plotting, and publishing. And those, are product, those are products we've ha had out for probably 10 years or more. Uh, Lifecycle Connection, is a new one. It is, it is for email notifications in conjunction with Vault lifecycle workflows. And then Project Connection is a new one that's under development right now and due to be released in the fall, this fall. And it's for managing engineering project drawings and files, separating uh, project copies from as-built copies, uh, which is a critical thing in, uh, in some industries we're going to talk about. First, we want to get into QVP Connection. And before I get into the QVP Connection itself, I think it's maybe important just to cover uh, what are the, the viewing options within Vault. You know, probably most of you have people in your company who may not create or edit files, or maybe they do that a little, but their primary need is to search, view, and print files. <clears throat> well, the options that exist in Vault now would be to provide those users with seats of Vault Workgroup or Vault Pro, but just dial their access rights back to view only. Also now, another a new option with Vault is Vault Office, which Vault Office works exactly like Workgroup and Pro, but it's for non-CAD users. And it's a lot less expensive, about $500 per concurrent user. 
so you could provide your viewers floating licenses of Vault Office, and we'll we'll take a we're going to take a look at uh, the Workgroup Pro and Office interface for Search View Print just to recap that a little bit, and then uh, we'll also take a look at the Vault Web Client, which is for Vault Pro, and uh, there are some nice features in the Search View Print options within Vault. But then I want to differentiate what QVP Connection does so people can evaluate whether it might be the right tool for them for their Search View Print users as opposed to the Vault client. And then uh, the Vault Office, just to show that in perspective, so there's, you know, there's three different levels of Vault server, basic, workgroup, and pro, and then there's basic, workgroup, and pro clients to go with those servers. But then if you have a workgroup or pro server in your company, you can add licenses of Vault Office for your non-CAD users to either create and edit non-CAD files, uh, do participate in workflows, review and sign off of CAD files, or if they just need search view print. Uh, but to look at you know, the search interface in Vault, whether it's Workgroup Pro or Office, um, its search interface, of course, you can do just a simple single value search here, or you can type in multiple search parameters here. So it's like a simple search, simple search box, Vault Office or the Vault desktop clients also have the advanced find, which is generally not an interface you want to use a lot, especially you know, if you have users out in the shop or the plant or you know, sales or customer service. You know, they just need something simple. Here you've got to build searches by filling in one or more properties you want to search on, the search condition for each one and then the value for each one, you know, add it to the search, and then run your search. So it's a very advanced search function, but it's a little bit cumbersome to use, so you typically only want to use it rarely. The other thing that's in the Vault Desktop client, and some people know about this, some people don't. The uh, reason people may not know about it, it's a little bit hidden. They have these, uh, these down arrows, I think they're officially known as chevrons, but if you hit the down arrows, that will bring up the query builder. And this is kind of like a configured form that each user can configure for themselves as far as what properties they want to search on. So instead of uh, hand building at each time like with find, you know, they can set any criteria they wish to here, and then search on one or more of these and get search results. And then if you hit the up arrows, it makes it go away, and it does remember how you laid out that form. The next, you know, when you exit and come back in. So those are the three search options in the Vault desktop client. If we look at the Vault web client, it has two of the three options available in the Vault web client. And of course, the Vault web client uh, is just a part of <clears throat> Vault Pro. You know, so the uh, Vault web client has the simple box search here and it also has the advanced find where I can build a complex query or search. Uh, so if you have you know, people in customer service, sales, shop floor, maintenance, that's probably not a really good search tool for them, it's a little bit complicated and hard to use. And then the, you know, the simple search, the simple query here may not be enough to really define things. So those are the search, the search 
UI options within Vault itself. If we go back now and look at, uh, I got a couple of screenshots here. Here's one where the query builder has really been filled out with a lot of options to search on. Our QVP connection, it actually works with all levels of Vault. It works with Vault Basic as well. Uh, but it is a fully customizable and configurable search UI designed to be simple, easy to use. So here's a couple of different examples. The one here in front, you know, this might be one uh, for somebody in uh, discrete manufacturing where they're building some type of parts or machines or something where, you know, somebody in the shop, they just fill in the part number, hit search, and it finds all of the files related to that part number or maybe job number. And then they could also click the drop down and filter it by document type. So they could say, just show me the assembly instructions for part 5141. And then the columns are all configurable so they can see the outputs they want and then pick a file, open it in the viewer. Here's one that was put together for a steel mill like for their maintenance people, so they can find files by filling in values for the mill, the line, the drawing discipline, the drawing type, equipment number, the vendor, um, the project or job number. So QVP is a fully configurable search UI. So if we look at it, and here's a little bit of a demonstration. Uh, here's one that's been configured. Um, so you can see these are the key values that their maintenance people need to search on. And we could fill in you know, drawing type, the architectural. Maybe I don't have any architectural. I'm sure why I'm not getting any. Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, and then I could come back and say, uh, also only show me ones where it's sheet number one. I don't have a lot of files in here, but you can see I can run a search. Maybe I get 500 files, fill in a second value, run the search again, filters it down to 200. So I can continue to add more parameters and filter my search results down. And then you can see, again, the column headings are fully configurable search parameters are fully configurable. Uh, so that's what QVP looks like. Some of the advantages of QVP is we think it's the uh, easiest to use search option. Also, the configuration of QVP, QVP is server-based. You, know, you might have uh, you know, a big facility, you might have 200 people who are just do search view print. Their search UI is controlled at the server level, whereas if they're using one of the Vault clients, everything is controlled and has to be configured client by client. So if you had 200 computers out there, that, search, that Vault search pane has to be configured on each one of them, and then users are free to change that if they wish. Um, so it makes it very difficult to install, manage, train, that type of thing. And QVP tends to be the lowest cost option. It's about, averages out, depending on how many seats you buy, 100 to a couple of hundred dollars per computer. Also, the way QVP is licensed, you don't have to worry about users logging out to free up your Vault licenses like you would with Pro, Workgroup, or Office. Also, QVP can interface with multiple data management or document management systems simultaneously. Uh, for instance, we have some customers who use QVP. They may have some files in Vault, and their older files are still in Windows folders. Uh, so you run in this case a lot where um, their part number and their file name are the same. So they type in part number, it first searches Vault, for that part number or file name, doesn't find a match, it rolls over and searches Windows Explorer for files. Or you know, they might uh, run two different data or document management systems in-house, 
QVP can search and retrieve files from both of them simultaneously. Also, QVP can interface with other in-house systems. So maybe in the search results, you want the column information, the properties, to be pulled from your ERP system or from another in-house database. So you know, find me all of the files in Vault related to this part number and go to my ERP system and retrieve vendor or cost or other routing information on those files and display that in the search results. Also, QVP can interface with our Autoplot software for automated plotting. And we'll be talking about uh, Autoplot here in a second. Uh, so QVP connection customers, you know, for discrete manufacturing, people have typically put it in, you know, to retrieve all files by part number, job number, et cetera. And then we've got a lot of customers in process manufacturing or utilities where their maintenance people need to retrieve bot files by some combination of drawing number, machine or equipment number, vendor, project number, building, line, area, drawing discipline or any combination of the above. Uh, the next tool I want to go into is our Autoplot connection software for batch printing and plotting. Before we talk about its functionality, it would probably make sense to recap what's in Workgroup and Pro. Uh, Workgroup and Pro do include some batch plotting capabilities. Uh, it does support multiple file types, for selecting files to print or plot. You can go by individual files, by folder. You can pick an assembly and it'll grab all the drawings related to that assembly. You can save plot lists. So you can create a list of files to plot, come back and plot them later. The batch plotting can print the related DWFs that have already been published and are in Vault instead of the native files. Uh, you can control then your printer plot parameters on a file by file basis. Uh, do plot stamps and watermarks. And then again, kind of like the, the, that search query builder in Vault, all the actions are controllable at the user level. And if we take a look at that in Vault, you know, if I go here to plot, this brings up the plot manager or batch plotting interface. I can go out, pick some files I want to batch print or plot here in Vault. I'll go to my uh, drawings folder and pick up a couple of files here. It'll do some scanning. It scans for related files first. And then, see, it's got a couple, of, and this one's got a couple of different sheets, so it's going to do both of those sheets. And then I can go through each individual file and set my plot parameters individually for each file. Also, if I go in here to options, you know, there's options here for. Um, so this is configured plot using visualization files. So I've told it to plot this DWG and these IDWs. It's actually going to grab the DWFs and print them if available, which is nice. You can add plot stamping, watermarking. And here's where I can save my plot lists. So it's a, a nice, simple little tool here. But then if we go back and look more in detail at, Q, at uh, Autoplot, uh, you know, there's some overlap in functionality. Autoplot also supports multiple file types, also supports SolidWorks files if you happen to have SolidWorks, does plot stamping and watermarking. Uh, users can plot CAD drawings without having a copy of the CAD application on their computers, which if Vault has the DWS, it uh, will as well. Integration with popular electronic data management systems. Uh, Autoplot works with Vault plus other document management systems. Also, it will work in conjunction with Windows Explorer. You can save plot lists, 
With Autoplot, you can schedule jobs to be printed at a later date and time. One of the big things with Autoplot is automatic setting of plot parameters, whereas the vault batch plotting, the parameters are user controllable. With Autoplot, you can set it up so that based on the user, based on the file type, based on the department they're in, Autoplot can automatically set their plot parameters. So again, if you have a, a big operation with you know, 100 people out in the shop who print, if Joe in the quality department goes to print an AutoCAD DWG file, it knows which printer and paper size and setting of watermarks and does that automatically. So Autoplot is, a, is very nice for bigger operations where you don't have to worry about setting parameters for uh, individual users or you know, users sending things to the wrong printer, that kind of thing. Um, also, Autoplot is good for system integration. We've done a lot of integration with ERP. For instance, we have uh, customers who they, they print out a a work schedule of parts that need to be run from their ERP system. Autoplot can read that parts list, go to Vault, find the drawings for those parts, and go ahead and batch print them so they're sitting there on the printer waiting for distribution to the shop. Autoplot also supports more automation as well, so when it um, when it opens drawings for plotting, runs an auto lisp routine or other script in Inventor to automatically change parameters within the drawing, you know, do the zoom extents first, um, open up AutoCAD and fill information into the title block that you need for this particular run. Had a lot of people have wanted that type of thing. Also, it supports publishing. Uh, if you publish the PDF or DWF, the files can be zipped up into a single package and then emailed out. And then again, with Autoplot, all the actions are controllable at the server level, so you've got more control and productivity and less end-user type problems. And then some screenshots from Autoplot. Um, you can see the so its interface. You can see it's a lot the same as the batch plotting within Vault. Here's where we're looking at the configuration screen. So it's got a lot more configuration screens for configuring the automation and the automatic setting of plot parameters and routing of certain files to the correct printers and so on. Now here you can see the setting of the uh, controlling of print stamping there in the lower right screenshot. So that's kind of a quick overview of Autoplot. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is our Hagerman Lifecycle Connection product, which works in conjunction with the Lifecycle functionality that's built into Vault Workgroup and Vault Pro. Uh, another term, um, Autodesk uses the term Lifecycle. Another term for it used in other systems might be Workflows. Uh, you know, so Basic Vault. Vault Basic just has check out and check in. When you get to the higher levels of Vault, it has the life cycles or workflows, so you can route documents. You can take a document out of release date, put it into change pending, route it to work in progress, where it can be checked in and checked out. Then the CAD user can route it to engineering review, and then maybe to manufacturing review, be accepted, rejected, then released. You know, whatever workflows you need to set up within your company can be done. So the Vault lifecycle workflows are fully configurable. You can assign one or more lifecycle workflows per category. So, you know, in Vault, you can set up different categories of documents, whether it's like electrical me drawing, mechanical drawing. Um, you could get into other types or categories of documents like quote request, change procedure, 
and then each different category of document in Vault can have one or more lifecycle workflows available with it. And the Vault lifecycle workflows can do validity checking. So if somebody tries to do a, a workflow transition on a particular file, it can check that file's properties to make sure everything's been done properly. Uh, transition security, you know, whether a transition can be executed or not, can be controlled by you know, its current workflow state, the user trying to do it, the group, that kind of thing. Also, document security can be controlled by state, user, and group. So for instance, there's a CAD file in Vault, and I've got editor rights, so I'm allowed to check in and check out. But with the Vault workflows, you can lock it down so I can't check it out unless the document's lifecycle workflow state is work in progress. Once it's transitioned to review, then I can't check it out anymore. So the the lifecycle functionality in Vault is very good. Minus one thing, which we'll talk about here in a second. You see, if I get into you know the administration and configuring my life cycles in Vault, you know, here are the life cycle workflows that I have available. So I've got um, my what I call flexible release process. Let me say edit on it, and you can see documents in these different categories are available to route through it. Uh, I can also you know, create new lifecycle workflows, copy, edit, delete, and then you know, here are the uh, lifecycle workflow states available in this lifecycle workflow. I can add additional ones, and then for each of these, so I'm on work in progress. I can control what transitions can be made from work in progress to other states and who can do it. So for instance, we can disable anyone transitioning a document from work in progress to release, or we can set, you know, only certain people can do it. So it's fully controllable. Also then, on the security tab, you can control what users or groups can actually check out a file based on the state that they're in. So if we went to for review, we really should have it so that no one can modify a file that's in the review state because other people are, are looking at it. So the the lifecycle workflows involve, we've worked with other systems, and I think uh, Autodesk did a really good job uh, on this as we you know, compare it to what other systems can do. The limitation on it is that it does not do email notifications. So when a document transitions from work in progress to review, say, the person who's the reviewer doesn't get any kind of notification. They have to go into Vault and kind of look for it, or somebody else needs to manually send them notifications. So our uh, Lifecycle Connection product for Vault allows you to do automatic email notifications. And to set that up, I have it installed, so I can just click Lifecycle Notifications Connection, and then you can see it automatically pulls the list of lifecycle workflows that I have configured in Vault, and then you can see here's all the states for each one. So if I look at this flexible release process, when it transitions to the review state, I could say add an email notification for the administrator to get an email notification. Of course, I can pick other users or groups, and then you can see in my Vault users, I plug myself in to the administrator. Uh, then you can have message templates. You can configure message templates uh, as far as what email message is automatically plugged in when the email is created. And you can have as many different email templates as you want. 
and switch one you want to use. And I can go in here and create and edit my templates. Uh, also, we have switches. At this point, these are turned off, so it's going to send an email notification without any additional prompting. But I can switch it so that when it executes the transition, it'll pop up and prompt me for additional recipients or for additional comments. So now if I go find a file, okay, so I've got this file. I want to find something that's work in progress. You know, I'll try it on this file. It should work. I can say change state from work in progress to for review. And if I did that correctly, I'm going to pause showing my screen for just a second. And voila, it created this email notification. And actually I did I should have had a different message template selected to say that it was going to review, filled in the text, and then it gives you a link, the user a link to that document in Vault so they can click on it, go to Vault, find the document they need to review. So our lifecycle connection features, um, you can configure the notifications by state and or transition. What that means is that basic state configuration, so if I go to release, so I can configure what notification happens on any document that arrives in the release state no matter where it came from. If it came in from work in progress, or if it came in from review, or if it came in from quick change to release, it's all the same notification. Under the advanced tab, you can have it send different notifications depending on whether it came in to release from review, quick change, and so on. So it gives you a little bit higher level of control. And then I think the other other things we, we looked at already. And I've got a couple of screenshots there. Then the last product we want to talk about is our project connection. This one is a little bit more targeted towards specific industries, uh, designed for asset-based process industries who do large plant projects. You know, typically you see that in like utilities and pipelines steel and aluminum producers, oil and gas, chemicals and refining, refining, food and beverage, pulp and paper, pharmaceuticals, or automotive assemblies. And I think companies like this, they have a huge plant structure there with you know, lots of big buildings and lots of interconnected equipment operating within those buildings and then tend to do large engineering project, engineering and construction projects to make changes to that equipment or to those buildings. Now, Vault was originally designed for people in discrete manufacturing, where manufacturing and designing computers or furniture or just uh, machines, consumer products. Vault is expanded and used a lot in these industries, um, but there is a bit of a lack in features and being able to allow for the separation of as-built from project copies. You know, so the as-built are you know, the drawings as they relate to the plant or facility as it is now. And of course, you know, maintenance people need access to those for performing their work. However, there may, may be you know, one or more short or long-term engineering projects with edits to the drawing going on. You know, some of these projects may last you know, one to three years, so those drawings are out for change for a long time 
while the operations are continuing. And you may even have the case that you know, one drawing may be assigned out to multiple engineering projects. And the document controllers and project managers in the company need to control and track all that. So the idea with Project Connection is that it allows for separate folder structures and access rights between you know, your as-built drawings and your project copies. And then one or more project copies can be created from an as-built and then either be edited internally or maybe sent out to an outside engineering firm. And then the Project Connection will manage the links and associativity between the as built and the project copies. And the project copies would, of course, be edited in the project folder uh, when the project copy is done or the new as built is created. The existing as built can be automatically updated from the new project or as built version. And the way we designed the Project Connection product, we wanted to leverage as much of the existing Vault functionality as possible and then just add functionality where needed. So we leverage uh, the existing Vault uses and where used tabs. We leverage the Vault attachment functionality. And then uh, we leverage the Vault custom property functionality, and we've got uh, some specific properties that we're tracking and updating and performing commands based on, uh, like HPC stands for Hagerman Project Connection, you know, so we're tracking file statuses as it relates to project connection, what's the parent file, what's the locked file, that kind of thing. So if I look, uh, I just made a little demo vault of what that will look like. And I'm going to jump into a different vault here. I just got a very simple structure here so I can illustrate it. Okay, so this would allow you to you know, set up a vault structure. We've got an as-built structure and a project structure. And of course your maintenance people would only have any access to see what's in as-built and then your engineers or document controllers can work down in the project structure. So if I just go to a, a drawing here, drawing two, then if I go to the uses tab, like I mentioned, we're leveraging this functionality, I can see all of the project copies related to this as built. And the way I'm working, my project copies and my as-built have exactly the same name. In some cases, you might want to add a, a prefix to the project copy name relating to the project number or something. So you can see this as-built has three project copies associated with it. I can see the folder that each project copy lives in. And then I can see my project connection status in regard to each file. So drawing two and as built, tell me it's an active parent, meaning that it's got some active project copies linked to it. Now if I look at uh, project two, and this is an inactive copy, uh, so that's going to be, that relates to a uh, completed or a um, canceled project. Active copy, so drawing two, that's an active, uh, project going on in uh, project three. And then project one is my locking copy. So that means that as it is now, I've got it configured so I can't click on my project three copy and update the as-built from it. My as-built can currently only be updated from the project one copy. And then you have control of you know, which is your lock locking copy if any. And then the commands in Project Connection to make all this happen, these are custom commands we've created. 
Uh, create linked copy you know, allows you to right click on an as built, say create a linked or a project copy, then ask you where you want to put it. Lock or unlock parent copy. Uh, so you can right click on a project copy and say lock the parent and it knows what its parent copy is and locks the parent copy to only accept changes from that project copy. Of course, then when your new as-built or project is completed, you can right-click on a project or link copy and update the parent at that time. Uh, you can also, you know, there's cases where, you know, it's a, you're not editing an existing drawing, uh, you're getting new drawings in from an outside engineering firm which will go into a project folder. So in that case, you can select those new project copies and just say create parent and it'll ask you for a location in the as-built structure to create the new as-built. And then uh, you know, a couple more to assign as linked or parent copy, deactivate a linked copy. Uh, so we saw that inactive copy on one of the files. That's what this command would do. And then unlink a file, that just would break any connection that exists between a parent as built and a linked project copy. Uh, so we've got, our company's got a lot of experience in working in this in environment, you know, the large plant environment. So based on our experience in working in that environment and requests from customers, you know, we've tried to come up with a simple and elegant as tool as possible to enable companies to do project engineering, concurrent engineering, separate the as-built from the working copies, and so on. So our status on the project products available now is QBP connection, auto plot, and life cycle connection. And the reason you didn't see more demonstration of project connection here in this session is that it's due out, due for release this fall. So it's still under development. And we're actually having a webinar just on it and some related topics uh, for companies who do uh, you know, this type of project work on October 1st. So if you have an interest in learning more, seeing a demonstration of Project Connection more in depth, um, and also be working with Autodesk Buzzsaw in conjunction with it for outside the firewall collaboration with outside engineering firms and construction companies. You might want to um, go to our website and sign up for our October 1st webinar. That's basically all I had down to show this morning. So at this point, we can take a look at, see if we have any questions here before we wrap up. If I can find my, there's my question panel, I'll drag it out and expand it. Okay, no questions yet. We will hold it open another couple of minutes, see what questions people might have. All right, Ashley, do you have any wrap-up comments or questions on your end? Well, I will say that if um, people think of questions later that they would like answered, you can simply um, respond to the confirmation email you received from GoToWebinar, and we can direct those to Matt to get those answered. Um, and also, if you could just uh, take a few moments to fill out that short survey, we would appreciate it. Um, it should automatically appear when you close down the session. And other than that, that's all I have. All right. Well, I didn't see any questions pop in, so I think uh, at this point, actually, you can go ahead and end the webinar. Appreciate okay. everyone joining us and uh, let us know how we can be of service. Yes. Uh, have a great day, everyone.